Now onto the Women's Tour of Flanders. It's 160 kilometers. They have the same Aldequarmont Paterberg combo, about 14 kilometers from the finish when it's a flat run in. As you know, there's the sort of all these climbs Mollenberg, Timberg, Team Victories, etc. There is less climbing. There is a decent amount of flat from it's like 15 k's of flat before the Koppenberg, which is with 45 kilometers to go. That's 700 meters of 10 percent. Swift, also the title sponsor, of course, of the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. If you missed any stages of the Tour of What's Hope here, or you want to do them all in one day, they're <laughs> all available at the moment to fill in. I've got one I need to do of the Tour of What's Hope here uh, when I get back. But if you want to check out Swift, if you haven't done any of the stages of the Tour of Autopia, you can do a seven-day free trial through Zwift.com through the link in the description down below. RVV last year in the women's was won, if you don't recall, by AVV after the last climb went solo. Elisa Longobodagini refused to help the group and SD Works weren't strong enough to bring her back. What I'm surprised, but AVV should be the top favorite, I think, because the harder race, no Carta Blanca Vas at SD Works. I'm surprised. They have Kopecky, Cicchini, Majerus, Royce, Havana, Black, Vollering. Do you think Kopecky, do SD Works just replay the Strata playbook, Benji? I think that's what they have to do, right? And the one, what was the one where she, she beat Vollering? Omelette. I think they just got to do the same thing and hope they can win the sprint against her, right? I agree. I feel like Kopecki is one of the favorites for this race. I, While I agree that Van Vleuten is one of the favorites for this race, I still see Kopecki as relatively close to her in that sense because of the team surrounding Kopecki that can support her. I think that SD Works is better than Movistar on the start list. And while Movistar does have decent support in Norsgaard, Guarishi and Sierra, Norsgaard who might even try and do stuff for herself a bit, although I do believe that they should go all out for Van Vleuten with that squad, Kopecki's a rider that has shown this year that she can climb much better than last year. Had bad luck a lot last year with puncture on a Sante Marie section in Strade last year, then also on the Outer Quartermont last year at the end of RVV. So didn't get to show herself while she was probably looking pretty good for that RVV. So this is an opportunity to do that again. And I do believe she's better than last year, has better team support. So uh, I would not look past Lotto Kopecki for winning this race quite certainly. And like you say, Demi Vollering was more supportive in Strade and so forth. In Omlop, I'm not sure it was decided yet who was the leader, but the race turned out that Kopecki was a stronger one in that race. So I believe that Kopecki is the leader on their cobble squad, but that doesn't mean that a Vandenbroek block, a Royster and so forth can't go into early moves to try and make it harder for a team like Movistar, who has to spend their riders early to chase down the likes of an SD Works. I think Drake will try to do the same things with a Cold War go and so forth earlier on in the race. And there's plenty of teams that will try to do similar stuff. And the curious thing for me is, while Kopecky is that sprinter cobble type on SD Works, I want to see how good Balsamo is at Trek. Although I believe this might be the race that Longo Borghini is the better candidate. I would... Hope they ride a defensive race for Balsamo. She won Genveil, then won Progrepana, won Trofeo Alfredo Binder, which is a hilly race, second at Van Drenthe, yeah. I think to Vibas, fourth at Omloop, she got dropped. I think they should... Ah, uh, it depends. She's the trump card. Like, I think that will let Cordon Rago and Longobord Guinea and Brand sit on moves. They shouldn't work with anything if Balsamo is yeah. behind. Because Vibas is going to get dropped. So... It's 160 Ks. It's flat to recover in the middle before the Koppenberg. But AVV is going to launch. I think, yeah, AVV is going to have to go solo early. or and Because if she goes solo, right, on the last climb like last year and mm-hmm. Trek have multiple domestiques, Van Dijk and Longobor Guinea pulling it back, committed for Balsamo, that's a different proposition for her. Um, so she's going to have to break it up early. And literally no one can beat Volsam in a sprint. Like, she's she's so fast. Uh, yeah. We have Voss here for, with Henderson, Casper, Marcus Lebecki, Canyon with Niviodoma, Miliusic, Shabby, Cromwell, Roy, Paladin. What do you think the strategies from those teams will be? With Voss kind of coming in 
under the radar. She hasn't been dominating this season yet. I think when it comes to Yumbo, it's going to be rather a, a combination of an offensive race with their secondary riders like Anna Henderson and so forth, while trying to play defensively with Voss to try and keep her in the groups where it's necessary. Because if the race is slower in the peloton, then Voss might be able to survive. But if the race is faster in the outsider groups getting away, they might get a benefit from that. So combining those two, those two methods, but making sure that the going in the breakaway doesn't ruin Voss in the back, you know? So it's a strategy that's tricky, but I do feel like that's their best choice of doing uh, stuff here. When it comes to Canyon Shram, they've got Nivia Doma, who needs the attack, to be honest. She can't go to the line with people, or she'll probably get slapped in the sprint. So uh, I think that Canyon Shram, I see a... I see them trying to get into moves early with Chabi once again, stuff like that, Paladin as well, and hope that Nivia Doma is strong enough to make a split with someone else that is also not a very uh, solid sprinter over the top of the last climb, and uh, it's going to be hard for them to win the race. I just don't see it at the moment. Lisa Branow, I think she was on the podium last year, maybe second or third the year before. She's only done one race so far this year. Uh, yeah. I can't favor him. I don't even think she's doing Dwar's Dua today. Now, her preparation for RVV last year was very different. She'd start on loop. Can Vavelham, she came third. So normally I'd be like, lock for top five. Even though she's on Sarah Tizard, it's not one of the top, top teams. But, yeah, she just doesn't – we just don't know. She hasn't been racing. Um, so we'll have to wait to see what Brenauer does. I think – I don't know. I think AVV still won Omelette Benji. She's still incredible, came second at, at Strata. Mm-hmm. I think the Peloton is sort of figuring out a little bit how much you have to not help her, how much you need to send riders up the road and force her to chase and put pressure on her team. I think we'll see that with – I think Royce has to go early, Benji. SD Works have to send Royce early with an Anna Henderson, yep. a Lizzie Banks type, a Grace Brown – a sort of rider. Georgie Pfeiffer? Yep. Yep. Pfeiffer, Georgie, and Bujak, and just take their chances. I think that's what they have to do and just hope Movistar with uh, their domestics can't chase. That's what I would do. And no. then even rolling attacks late doesn't work. They tried that in Strata and she closed them all. Maybe it did work. I don't know. Maybe it did. She got tired before the final climb and she lost the the sprint or the uphill sprint to Capecchi. Yeah, it's when it comes to MDG, that's an interesting team in my eyes as well because they've got that combo of three leaders right now, Brown, Peter Ludwig, and Cavalli. And about Chapman, at the moment of recording this, she's been in the lead for like 50 kilometers in the women's riders out of London, so she's clearly looking good when it comes to her form as well. And I'm looking forward to see whether she can play a role in those early attacks as well. But a bit earlier than, for example, in the last two clients, because that's when you need to try and roll attacks with Brown, Ludwig, and Cavalli. And Brown's the rider that is the long-term attacker for me in that squad, while Utrecht Ludwig is the Paterbetic type, while Cavalli is the, uh, I don't know, is that also kind of just like the following and sprint type? or Because her sprint is not that amazing to beat Kopecky and so forth, so she needs a gap over that. But I just don't see that. FTJ are in a good spot. They got Chapman early, as you said, Ludwig, Cavalli, Brown. I think you always have to have one of them in any move that goes. You never chase back any move. You do not help SD Works, Trek, or Van Vlerten. And yeah, you try and break the race apart. If you get in a move with Ludwig and Chantal Van Umbrook Black, or Brown with Longo Borghini, you work. Maybe they don't work with you. Longo Borghini probably wouldn't, but you have to take your chances because if you go, as I said, with one of them to – the problem is Benji. If they have Cavalli Ludwig on the part of Berg and AVV goes clear, they don't really work with each other. That's the thing. If <laughs> we saw it last year, if AVV goes clear part of Berg and there's a small group, they just won't work that well together. Yep. Um so you want to avoid that situation. But they do have a with Brown, they have a much, much stronger team. What about Shab- Shabby as well, Benji, on Canyon Shram and Paladin, riders who were sort of used as exposure 
sort of early breakaways last year on Live, I think they need to roll the same strategy. And Nuvia Dome yeah. has got to be like, remember Strade? Remember Strade Bianca when Nuvia Dome was closing attack? She was the only one helping AVV and she was closing the Kapeki move, right? Yeah. Uh, before the final climb. I think they just got to be really cynical, never help, and only attack and get in moves. Um, that's, that's how I see it for them. Do you think do you think Shabby and Paladin could I don't know. I'm trying to think, could they top five this race? I think Shabby could. Ooh. That's my I hot think take. it's gonna be difficult. Okay. I'll accept that hot take, but I I don't see it happening personally. I'm more than intrigued by the uh, outsiders in this race because while we always talk about the favorites here, I find it hard to believe that an outsider will do amazing in this race personally as like or rather we don't necessarily expect to win on a uh, smaller team, let's say. When it comes to Bastianelli, do you think that she might be able to hold on and therefore get it in a sprint like in 2019, for example? Or is that not possible with the team she has to keep her in that position, knowing that a lot of attacks will come from the other teams? Well, what what happens with SD Works? That's the thing. Because Trek will be happy with that because they'll be like, Bolzano is going to beat her 80% of the time plus. Yeah. If Tre- if SD Works have Royce and Kapeki and Volering, I don't know what they do. I th- I think you attack if Volsimo's yeah. there for sure. I think you have to re- repeat attacks. So Movistar, SD Works won't want to sprint with her. FDJ won't want to sprint. No, my answer is no. I think it'll be difficult for that. And Trek have been good, but yeah, what about Voss? I think Voss wants a flat sprint. I think that's her best chance of winning a group sprint where she out guiles somebody i don't see her legs being actually strong enough to just like nuke the part of berg and go with a group with avv and then work and then win i think she wants a, a group sprint um but yeah this is the biggest test do you know why vash isn't here benji i think she was focusing on the hill classics for uh for the team of sd work so i'm waiting for uh the likes of a amstel gold race for example to see what she does she's doing both amstel flash and liege for example so i think that's the uh, area they chose to go towards the punchy hills instead of the punchy cobbly hills and honestly i don't mind she's 20 she's got plenty of years to do all the races so i find it fine to do those races because i feel like amstel flash and lbl might be easier to jump into for a first year pro than the cobble races. Yeah, and I think what they're doing is Kapeki's performance peak is finishing. She's raced a lot, and then they substitute her out, even though I think she could do well at those races, obviously, for Vash. Maybe that's what they're they're doing, and they're like, we don't need to load up every rider into our RVB. But yeah. I would say you, I would say you do. I'm surprised she's not there. I actually maybe there's injury or illness, I don't I don't know about. But time for predictions, Benji. Um We've got AVV here, so really every time you don't pick her, it's kind of a hot take for this race. But I'm going with Ellen Van Dyke. Okay, I did not see that one coming, but I'm down to hear your uh, reasoning. That counts as my hot take, by the way. Ellen Van Dyke winning. I think, yeah, I just think she gets into like a, a move, like at Europeans, um, mm-hmm. like a debate Movistar. And Movistar just can't bring it back. And then AVV tries to bridge, and can't bridge care, it. Or... Well, it's with <laughs> it's with Royce. And then Royce crashes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I don't know. predicting crashes I, already. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, my actual prediction for who's winning is uh, Kapeki. Okay, uh, I've got the same prediction. I believe that over the last part, everybody will get two riders at the front, which is Von Vleuten and Kapeki. And SD Works will do what they always do, not pace with Von Vleuten. And Von Vleuten will do what she always does. It, regardless of who's in her wheel, just pace to the line and still try and beat that rider in our wheel. And I don't think it's going to work with Kapeki in the way that it did with Volring at uh, Omlop. It was Volring, right? Yeah, it was Volring. Yeah, yeah, it was her, yeah. <laughs> I think Balsamo wins the whatever reduced sprint. She well, that's not a hot take. That's just literally yeah. what's going to happen. She's the Christoph of this race. <laughs> yeah, I think she'll be like that. Um, I, she's too fast for people to go the line with her. That it'd be suicide. Um, 
But yeah, I'd be keen to see Voss and Lebecki show something as well. Uh, other riders to watch, I'm just trying to pick out some sort of young riders who who might surprise and show something. Um, Guazzini? Yeah, that's a good one. Guazzini and Charlotte Cool. I want to see how she goes on Team DSM. 22 years old. She's had a middling classic so far. Not not top, top, but um, it's her first RVV, I think. So we'll see how she goes. But yeah, you got Kopecky, Benji. Any big outsiders for the podium? Oh, big outsiders for the podium is a... That's a difficult one. I just don't see it happening too Never much at to RVV it. that it happens, to be honest. And uh, when I look at the start list of every team, I'm like, they've all got... The teams that can do something here have like one leader that can do it. And they will ri- likely ride for that leader. So I don't see a podium with an outsider on it. Could be wrong, but hey, that's my take. That's the thing is, if you say any of the ST Works riders, except for maybe Majerus, it's not an outsider, but Royce can certainly do well and, and podium here or win or whatever. But should be exciting to watch. I hope they take it to AVV and put her and Movistar under pressure on Sunday. We'll be watching. We both have Kopecky. Uh, we'll have the RVV recap podcast afterwards, then straight into preparation for Harry Roubaix. The classics are flying thick and thin. Thanks, as always, to Zwift, our presenting sponsor. If you want to check out Zwift for a free seven-day trial, you can go to Zwift.com through the link in the description. Otherwise, me and Benji are going to watch the end of Dwar's Duel and then have a little bit of a rest. Maybe an interview later this week, maybe not. We'll stay tuned. Until then, ciao.